Hello Maha, how are you? I'm good, how are you? It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so um, much. We've known each other for a few years and worked together as well. So why don't you give a brief introduction of how your journey has been and uh, you know we'll build the conversation from there on. Okay, sure. Uh, so I've been associated with uh, pharma and FMCG industry for the last 14 to 15 years now. Uh, I took like two breaks in the middle, so it's like 13 years of experience in total uh, in, with Sanofi, GSK and Reckitt and I have worked in finance as well as supply chain. Started my career with finance uh, because I, I'm an MBA in finance and that was a natural uh, thing to do. And back then, to be very honest, you'd be shocked to know <laughs> that I had no clue about supply chain because there was yeah. a lot of focus on finance, yeah. marketing and HR. Yeah. Uh, so I never knew back then when I was doing my MBA that you know, I will finally you know, change my career and build it in supply chain. So being part of the industry for 15 years, how would you, let's say, define the early part of your career and what really, let's say, made you get into this uh, industry? You said you mentioned you started from finance. Yeah. But what made you join supply chain? I think it was the second uh, role that uh, was basically a mixture of finance and supply chain. Okay. So I, w I was working as a business partner for Iran market for, for finance as well as supply chain. And uh, that's when I was introduced to supply chain the first time and I really enjoyed that experience. And then again, the third role I was given, you know, which was in finance, but you know, I started missing that part of supply chain where you, uh, I, I think it has a wider impact, I would say, when it comes to supply chain. Although back then it was pretty much a back office job mm -hmm. and it was evolving at that point in time. There was this introduction of SNOP and all of that yeah. and uh, things were changing for us. So I was really enjoying that initial phase where we were becoming more and more important and making more impact. So the, the supply chain ecosystem has evolved over the years. You know, you've been part of it from let's say 2008, I've been part of it from 2013. How do you think it has evolved and what do you think, maybe if uh, it comes to your mind, the let's say defining moments of the supply chain industry in Pakistan? Uh, I think <coughs> with this whole uh, change of mindset with SNOP process, which is more of a process uh, which is more of a mindset change mm -hmm. than a process I feel you know because previously you know the major focus was what the factory can make yeah. uh, nobody really cared what the consumer wanted yeah. then there was a lot of focus on what the consumers and if you're in a pharma industry what the patient is looking for so it started with that so with that supply chain started becoming much more important it became much more data driven and collaborative which wasn't the case earlier on because we were kind of working in silos uh, when i started my career in supply chain we were uh, part of a finance function mm. we didn't have a proper even function one or two people were there and now it's like a huge team of like 10 to 15 people at least in a in a mid-sized company uh, so it has changed with this boom of startups coming up, uh, we see lots of solutions, let's say Uberized logistics model um, companies which offer, you know, smart solution in terms of logistics Yeah. Um, and a lot of B2B players coming up who, you know, intend to change the supply chain structure, be it retail or the core FMCG. What, what, what is your view on this and, you know, where do you see this space, let's say, going in the next five to six years? I think it's going at a really fast pace, honestly. And uh, with this whole startups booming up, uh, it has changed uh, how the big companies are operating as well. Uh, because uh, to, to be, you know, uh, at par with them and with the new solutions and innovations that they are bringing in, mm. uh, they need to be, you know, uh, up to speed and they need to, you know, uh, raise their bar, basically. So, which is a good thing. It's increasing uh, uh, the innovation within the supply chain industry. That's mm. what I feel. Because previously we were doing a lot of manual processes. Yeah. Now we know there's so many uh, cost-effective solutions available in the market, mm. which is a great thing. Now coming to a startup, I think it's completely different. Where uh, I feel that, you know, any process change has to be enabled through tech and that's the beauty of it. Uh, did you come across any such, let's say, changes or 
any sort of change management per se yeah, yeah. in your experience at Sanofi maybe? Yeah, yeah. So recently we are introducing this distributor order management system, which is an automated system. Previously everything was very manual and Excel based and you know, it was very, very difficult to even track back what we had done, you know, a year back or something. And now everything is going to be there and is easily accessible. And we are also, you know, at the same time introducing the, these kind of tools to our distributors and partners and at the same time upscaling them as, at the same time, which is, I, I think, a great achievement. So in your view, Maha, um, how do you think the, let's say, the, the management training programs have evolved over the years? So back when we started careers, it was very different. How do you think that has evolved over the years and maybe, you know, give some uh, views with regards to supply chain? Okay. Uh, so when I started my career with GSK, so they had a management trainee program for a lot of departments. Uh, for some odd reason, it wasn't there for finance back then. Okay. And so, <laughs> so I didn't get an opportunity to work as a management trainee. But when I see people these days, you know, getting that kind of opportunity, I think it's amazing. Uh, because, you know, you, they get to learn so much about not just the work, but how to operate in this complex environment. And, you know, they learn so much uh, through internships, through management trainee programs. They have a lot of more exposure and opportunities that we had back then. Uh, but having said that, I think we've <laughs> come a long way too, yeah. I, I think I would just echo the thoughts. I yeah. mean, um, it has, the exposure these, you know, graduates get uh, early on in their career is quite amazing yeah. when they get cross-functional exposure. Probably we didn't get uh, to experience, but I think it gives you an overall, uh, let's say, good holistic view of the of business. The, yeah, yeah. So you've been part of the FMCG, um, you know, company as well, uh, and also you worked in pharma. So what, let's say, similarities do you draw between the two, and uh, what, in your view, uh, would be, let's say, if these were to evolve into, let's say, a, a totally startup-like mindset. Mm, I think similarity to yeah, ke har roz aag lagi bhi hoti hai when it comes to supply chain, whether it's pharma or FMCG. But in terms of decision making, I think with FMCG they have a lot more flexibility and room uh, to you know make quick decisions. When it comes to a pharma industry, it's much more regulated. So obviously, a lot of things you have to see what policies and rules that you you're going to you know abide by, and then you can make a decision. Uh, so that's the major difference. Other than that, supply chain everywhere is pretty much similar in both the industries. Yeah. Brings me to my next question. Yeah. Uh, you started off with GSK, then joined Rekid, and then uh, you're working as head of supply chain in Sanofi. So how has your journey been and what was, in your view, a uh, defining moment in your career in either of these companies? With every company, I learned a lot. And in terms of a defining moment, I feel there'd be two. Uh, one would be my second role that, you know, where I was a business partner for Iran market. Uh, I, I think I was introduced to supply chain plus, you know, uh, I was, it was the second year in my career mm -hmm. and I was pretty much part of the top management uh, team for uh, Iran market. I got to travel a lot. Uh, I learned a lot about different, you know, cultures and all of that. So from personal and professional point of view, I think that would be one. Uh, another thing when I was given the head of supply services role uh, in Reckitt, so it was a role where I had to lead a big team, uh, so that was a major shift, you know, I would say, in how things were working before that. Yeah. Achha, I also would like to know, how your experience ke sara moving from FMCG to e-commerce, you know? So, um, it has been really, uh, I mean, a, immense learning. In the sense that, uh, you know, FMCG, mein, jis ki companies may have worked, other, of course, there's a lot of, let's say, innovation being done and uh, process changes hote in, within supply chain. But I think how it has shaped up in e-commerce is very different. For example, at Jugnu, um, when, you know, we, we work, let's say, ke we have to change a process. Uh, eventually, the, the process change can be done but the solution does come through tech. And uh, I was actually surprised. Uh, I mean, you've worked on very strong ERPs, mm. uh, let's say SAP, 
or JD Edwards. <laughs> but at Jugnu, it's so different. And uh, you know, if we want to, let's say, uh, change, want to change, we are, we want to change our warehouse management system. You know, we do it. It goes in into development because it's in house. Mm. If we want to, let's say, do things differently in terms of logistics, how the route planning and optimization happens, we do it in house. So I think uh, it's it's beautiful. And um, I was actually appalled and that uh, itni easily changes can be implemented yet. You know, if you had to change something in SAP, it would take ages, ages. and there has to be a global process which you follow karna padta hai. So I think this is the one of the most uh, key learning. Uh, I mean, you cannot draw a comparison to the way things happen at Jugnu. You've taken a decision and you know, you have to take decisions yesterday and it's so fast paced. So always, you know, keeps you on your toes. Uh, supply chain career <laughs> is the sort of career that keeps you on your toes let alone an e-commerce supply chain that you're managing. So it's it's been amazing learning. So Maha, in my, let's say, supply chain career, um, I really didn't come across many women working in the industry, especially at so, you know, so senior. Um, but, you know, I came across you uh, at Racket, heading the supply chain division altogether, uh, which was, you know, a, you know, a new, let's say, experience for me oh. that somebody uh, a lady heading the function so and that also supply chain and operations so how do you uh, feel about it you know heading the function and that too that is so operational and so intensive when it comes to warehousing and logistics uh, to be very honest I personally am very comfortable with this whole thing uh, because in my own personal experiences I've not had such experiences where I felt left out or you know something like that uh, but there have been instances, uh, especially with the, our business partners or distributors, mm -hmm. where they would find it very strange that a female is leading the department. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we go to areas like, you know, Sargoda or Sialkot or mm -hmm. these kind of places, there people would be like, uh, really? And they would come and look at me as if I'm some sort of, you know, uh, alien or something. So, those experiences are But uh, in, in a city like Karachi, I think it's uh, pretty okay and uh, when I joined Sanofi uh, there was just one female and she also left in a, in a couple of months so it was a totally <laughs> male dominated team uh, but I've never faced any issues there you know everyone has been very respectful and it was more about the work rather than the gender okay There's, there are a lot of opportunities uh, the, the startup world has really brought in so what message or let's say advice you would want to give? I think two things that I've noticed in this younger generation that you know they're very dissatisfied with what whatever they're doing. Uh, if they are in FMCG they want to move to another industry, if they're in another industry they want to move to another role. So it's okay to experience and explore but mm. sometimes you need to wait it out as well. So create that balance and uh, that'll be one advice. Have some patience and enjoy the current moment rather than always you know thinking about the future it's it's good to have a plan in place but at the same time enjoy the current you know moment or or, or the journey that you're in so maha uh, thank you so much uh, we'll have a quick rapid fire uh, round and i'll ask you some questions okay and you have to give quick answers okay uh, so who is your role model so I would say there's not one person, you know, there are like uh, different things about different people that, you know, uh, you in inspire or you admire. Uh, so that's, that's the thing. Okay. There's no one person, yeah, that I can think of. How do you unwind on stressful days? Uh, I think Netflix. <laughs> that's been one. And spending time with my son. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, if you could meet and have dinner with any person who ever lived, who would it be and why? Uh, mm, 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 mm. I, I think these days my son is really, really fond of soccer players. So maybe one of the soccer players just to, you know, <laughs> to please my son. <laughs> okay. What would be the title of your autobiography be? Mm. Anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's great. Uh, tell us about the time you tried something for the first time. 
So I think indoor skydiving is something which was an amazing experience. I was scared to death, <laughs> honestly, although I knew everything was like, you know, uh, I was completely safe there. And uh, it was not even the real experience, but I was freaked out. I would not open my eyes and I was like, when is, okay. is it going to end? But it was a great experience. I'd like to do it again. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Which actor would you want to play in the movie of your life? Which actor uh, should play my role? I think I'd like to play it myself because, you know, as a kid, I wanted uh, basically <laughs> to be an actress and a dancer. So probably I can get that opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Maha. It yeah. was a pleasure talking to you. Okay. Thank you so much.